today we want to both extend the way we think of Paul by looking at the book of Acts, but also to begin to zoom out from Paul and to look at the apostles more broadly. Acts is a unique book in the New Testament. And I want you to think of it in terms of four themes. Four themes that will help you understand the meaning of this rich text. One, it's geographic frame. In Acts, geography is theology. The places, the where, reveals the substance, the what. It's about the geography. It's deeply symbolic. Two, Acts is a history of the church, of the apostolic church. It's the only history in the New Testament. Third, Acts is the second volume of Luke. Luke, Acts. They go together, written by the same person, sharing the same themes, unified in their composition, so that things that happen in Luke reverberate in Acts. And things that happen in Acts fulfill and enrich the things that happen in Luke. Just as Luke is the gospel of what? What is Luke's emphasis? How Gentiles can be saved. Universal salvation. So Acts is the story of universal salvation. Fourth and finally, we want to think about Paul's citizenship. Paul's status as a Roman citizen, which is... Fascinating, historically, which is particularly important in a class that is meant to study the origins of Christianity from the perspective of Roman history, which is truly essential to Luke's message in the book of Acts. Paul's Roman citizenship isn't a, a detail. It, it has some truly revealing meaning. What genre is Acts? A history, good. I want you to be even more specific. Do you remember? What is it? Romantic history. Will you say it loud? Romantic history. See, some people listen to me. Romantic history. It's a romantic history. What does that mean, romance? Well, it actually has quite a specific meaning. The Roman Empire sees the birth of a new kind of prose writing called the romance usually about a boy and a girl who fall in love and get married and live happily ever after. It's really romance. But it's a broader genre of adventure writing, adventure stories. Dramatic, miraculous, featuring heroes, adventurous. So when we call it a romantic history, understand this isn't history like a history textbook. It's not history like a dusty, old, boring book on the shelf in the library. It's a very literary, very romantic history, adventurous. It's about trials and adventures. And we want to understand what that means. It's about speeches, and it's about journeys.